Hi everybody, SoCal Marine here. I'm going to quickly run you guys through um, changing the bearings in this. Uh, this is a Volvo Penta V belt pump. Uh, they're not common. Uh, they got the double bearings. And um, I'm just going to quickly run you guys through how to how to get these off. You absolutely need a press. You cannot hammer these things. And I'll give you the part numbers and everything. All right. So you got your pump body off. The first thing you're going to notice is that the pulley is going to be right up against it like so. Okay. The first thing you're going to want to do is there's a snap ring that keeps this bearing set in there. There's a snap ring. So you can't just press the whole lot out. You have to press this off first. And um, these OEM ones, they're like cast aluminum. They, they, they can crack. And it's really almost impossible to get anything in there. I mean, you can see how close that sits in there. Like, So the only way to get in there, what I use, uh, these are um, really good quality ones. You want to support this pulley as much as possible as you can um, across this whole area because you just won't get anything in there. Um, so you pretty much are going to have to try and either get something right on this flange right on the inside over there like so, which is very difficult. Uh, most of the time you're just going to have to end up doing something like this on the press. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to support it under there and you're going to press the pin down. All right. This is how it's going to sit on the press. And uh, I heat this up with a torch uh, because if you crack this, it's just a real pain in the butt. Um, that is the most difficult part. Absolutely. That's by far the most difficult part. Once you get the pulley off, um, you're pretty much going to have this over here. You're going to have the shaft sticking like so. And you're going to have this bearing set inside there. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the snap ring out. And then um, these bearings are not really tight in the housing. So what you can do then is um, you can, what I do is I like to support uh, the housing. Sorry, not with this. Give me a second. I have a good old snap on guy like this. The first thing I do, I'm showing you upside down though. So you're looking up from the bottom of the press. But the first thing I do is I support as much of the housing as I can initially just to get the bearings um, broken free from the housing. And once they get to a point, maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, this first bearing is going to start coming out flush with the housing. And so what you're going to have to do then is you're going to have to once again um, just support the outer edge like so with two of these so that uh, the bearings can come past while you press this up all right so once you get the shaft out you're going to have the bearings sitting on on there like so little spacer in between you see there's a shoulder on the shaft and so basically from here on it's quite straightforward um, you could just put the bearing puller underneath these bearings and if you're feeling good you could just try and push them out at the same time um, usually what you'll find is that the outer race of these are not terribly tight in here. Um, but anyway, so once you've got these bearings off, you just replace them and um, press them all the way back onto there. Don't forget the spacer, put the second guy on. Um, and now what you want to do is you also want to replace that seal down there. And don't use Chinese bearings, folks, please. Do not use cheap Chinese no-name brand. Use Timken, SKF, NTN, any brand. Good brand of bearing. This Chinese trash that you guys are thinking you're saving yourself $5, you're risking your whole engine for it. It is not worth it. I'm actually shocked. There's a very, very well-known seller of water pump kits, and they use trash Chinese bearings I've replaced them every three months and never again will I use those kits. Easy to find online just because it's popular doesn't mean it's any good. Do your own research, cross-reference the numbers and buy quality junk. Yeah, there it is, quality junk. Buy quality stuff. Uh, give me a second over here. Okay, so this is the seal number for uh, SKF. Uh, those are the dimensions, 16 by 28 by 7. HMS 
RG gray nitrile seal. So you could find any seal with those dimensions. This this is metric, 16 millimeters by 28 by 7 millimeters. Okay. So, anyways, this is what I use on all the serpentine Volvo Penta pumps. I'm 99% sure that this is the same as this. Okay. The bearings I use are NTN, and they are. Golly, that's small. 6202. These are 6202 bearings, common as a beard. But you've got to get the 2RS. It comes with two rubber seals. That's what the 2RS uh, suffix is for. And do not buy junk bearings. I can't stress it enough. Um, so anyways, once you've got your bearings and your spacer back on, um, the seal just sits in here the seal uh, just sits in here um, just note how the lip is facing upwards towards the impeller and the idea is that it's keeping the water salt water most likely from getting behind the seal to the back of the pump now when you see a drip behind this pump it's telling you that the seal is leaking it's not going to make your boat overheat it's just telling you that the seal is wearing out okay so you can address that over time as you feel fit uh, press the new um, seal in. You can maybe use some Loctite just to kind of snug it in place, uh, depending. And then what you're going to do is, with this assembly now together, you're going to press it back in from the top down. Put a little bit of grease on the uh, spline area so you don't damage the seal down there. Um, there is a little o-ring that sits down there, so you got to put that over the shaft like so see there's like a little groove there new o-ring and you're gonna press this whole shaft of the bearings back into the housing now if you can almost wiggle the bearings in by hand uh, then you have to use a little bit of bearing retainer um, maybe just very light coat it's designed for bearings that uh, were once a very light interference fit that have worn um, put some bearing retainer in there just to hold those down once you got those guys all the way in just press till it's snug don't forget to put the little snap ring on, uh, make sure it seats, and then finally, um, just press this back in. Um, usually the shaft sits just level with this little bevel over here. It's just below flush with this. Um, so there's a little bit of variation there. You can always use your mic to figure out what depth they were. Um, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. And um, yeah, thanks for watching guys. and. Uh, safe boating okay guys just a quick supplemental uh this seal number is in fact the correct one for the older v-belt style it works on the volvo penta serpentines as well so just before we tie up um uh for pete's sake please grease the impeller shafts when you put it in use marine grease if you can so um there's the old seal I actually managed to tap this whole assembly in with a block of wood just to let you know how, how loose of a fit this normally is. Um, okay, these bearings just feel bueno. Now, when you go to press the pulley on, you don't want to start pushing the shaft through the bearings. Um, and since the shaft is recessed, what I do is just take a little uh, nut like this and you just kind of put it in there. Um, it's loose, it ain't going to damage anything, and it's just above the surface of the housing. It's almost like perfect. And I'm going to place that on the press like that so that when I go to press this uh, pulley on, I'm not going to start pushing the shaft through the bearings and mess up the alignment and everything. Um, so, yeah, that's it. And um, as mentioned, don't forget that snap ring down there. It's important. And don't use junk Chinese bearings, please. And uh, goes on one way. So, thank you for watching.